It's the photo editing app that's taken over. Automates the creation of content. It's just really taken off in the past couple of weeks. In the first 12 days of December, Lenza AI app saw 13 and a half million downloads and $30 million in revenue. If you don't already know what Lenza AI is, it's that AI image app that takes your face and turns it into all sorts of cool AI art, cartoon, posters, Disney characters. In this video, I'm gonna walk you step by step how to generate unlimited Lenza AI photos for free. If you haven't already, go ahead and like this video, subscribe, and hit that bell notification because I'm gonna be coming out with lots of videos about tech, entrepreneurship, and lifestyle travel that you're really not gonna wanna miss. Hey, my name is Christian, but you can call me Lil. One really amazing thing about living in London is that the weather can change at the drop of a hat. And it can be dark in the middle of the day. Who wouldn't love that? It's raining now, so I'm gonna go inside, but next time you see me, I'm gonna be on the computer. See you in a minute. I'm going to explain very quickly what's about to happen. Lenza AI does not have any of their own proprietary software. They repackage open source software called Stable Diffusion. Now, because Stable Diffusion is open source, you can actually run it on your own machine. You don't need anything special, don't need a special graphics card. That's what this video is about. We're going to walk you through exactly how to run the same software that Lenza uses on your own device so that you can create AI art like this and this and this completely for free and totally unlimited. First thing that you're going to do is you're gonna to go to this link and I'm going to leave this link obviously in the description. Um, like I said, everything's gonna be super simple. We'll just follow these instructions exactly as. We're going to go ahead and go in here, um, press this button. You say run anyway, doesn't matter. You might need to click this a few times. There's nothing here you need to do to set this up. You just click that button. <coughs> it's gonna run, it's finished. You install your requirements right here. The thing that we're gonna do is we need to log into something called Hugging Face. And if you don't know what Hugging Face is, that's totally fine. I will leave this link also in the description. It's just this website where they host the AI models. Um, it's called Hugging Face. If you don't have an account, you just go up here, create an account, and then you're gonna go to this link, which is in the description, huggingface.co slash settings slash tokens. You can create a new token, or you, if you already have one, then you can just copy it right here, and you're just gonna paste it directly into here. This is not to do anything except to connect to Hugging Face, which hosts the AI model. So there's nothing to worry about. That's the only thing that we need that for as well. I'm gonna go ahead and click this. Next, so this is where things get a little bit more complicated. Um, this right here code is it. This is how it tells you like where your photos are going and how to sort of categorize them. Um, so this right here is the instance directory. This is the this line, this line, and this one are the only things you need to change. As you can see there, I'm in putting it in the folder called Lil. That's just you know what I'm calling myself. The class is man. You can change it to woman if you're a woman, or hamster if you're a hamster. <laughs> And then this right here, I also changed to Lil, just like that. Once you've changed that here, like if you want, if your name is Frank and you put in Frank, you can change this to Frank. Oops, like that. Make sure it's spelled the same everywhere though. But I'm just gonna go ahead and do Lil and man, press play. You're gonna go ahead and give it access to Google Drive. The one thing to keep in mind here is you do wanna make sure that you have at least four gigs, I think ideally like eight gigs of space in your Google Drive because it is going to save something called, it's gonna save the, the AI model that's trained with your face on it. But so I, I'm gonna go ahead and hit connect Google Drive. Gonna give it permissions, continue. Okay, finish that, we go down. This is where we begin training. Now this again, you're going to have to change the words here. If your name is Frank, you're gonna to have to put Frank. If you are a woman, I would put woman here. Same thing here, Frank and woman. I don't know any women named Frank, but you know, maybe there is one. Man and I'm gonna go to put this back to man and Lil. If you wanna go with Lil, you can also just go with Lil. You don't have to change anything. Go continue, press play. That just saves the settings. And this right here is where we are going to upload our photos. And so here are the photos that I've chosen. There are 16 of them. I've done this with like as little as five photos. Um, but if you can have, get like 20 to 30, that's a lot better. And the photos are going to be all, they're all going to be better if you can choose photos that show you like at a different variety of angles and a different variety of scenarios. The one thing, one of the most important things that you need to keep in mind is that you want to make sure that you are the only person in the photo. If there's somebody else in the photo, you want to crop it. <laughs> Something to keep in mind here with the photos is that this is sort of gonna be like an average of how it looks. So think about it, your style. If I took a picture, if every single one of my photos had this hat on, most of the photos that show up in the AI would show up with this hat which is fine if that's what you want, but if you don't want that, then make sure that you're giving yourself a variety, um, a variety of angles, a variety of poses, a variety of clothes, all sorts of stuff. Those things are going to make you, give you you know, a much diverse look to your photos. And again, make sure that you're cropping yourself or cropping other people out of the photos. 
Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and upload like that. Press this play button, it's going to bring this up. You choose your files, you can drag them directly over here. So right now it is uploading the photos that I'm going to ask it to train later on. Nothing to worry about, nothing. Everything's been pretty simple so far, I hope. Okay, it's finished, that was quick. So this right here, you're also gonna to wanna to change to your name. If you chose Frank earlier, put Frank because this is what is gonna be used as like the example photo. This doesn't matter as much as the other ones, um, but you still probably want to change that. That's the only thing in this code here that you need to change. It's the only thing that I would change um, for my own models. You go ahead and press play. So this right here is, it's training the AI on my face, on the photos that I gave it. This is gonna take probably like 10, 15, 20 minutes, something like that. So it's a good time to, you know, just like let it run in the background, go grab your coffee, go brush your teeth, whatever you're doing, gonna do, um, and then come back when this is finished. It's not gonna take too long. Don't, don't, leave it, don't leave it hanging forever, but okay, so we've come back. That's like, I don't know, 20 minutes or so. Um, this right here, once it says 1200 out of 1200, that means that it is done training on my face. So the next thing that we want to do uh, is quite important. I, I mean, not yet, but go ahead and press play here. It's gonna take in a second. This is going to save our, our weighted photos. Okay, so once you've gotten to this step right here, you're gonna see something that looks like super wonky. It is of course photos that roughly generally resemble me somehow, um, but obviously there's some like super weird stuff about it. Nothing to worry about. This is exactly what you expect to see. This is essentially the AI's interpretation of things before you've actually given it any input. So. It kind of takes, you know, something from your photos, but also something of its own interpretation mixed with sort of like the style that you actually uploaded. So like you can see that like, I mean, it's sort of like outdoorsy. You can kind of see those photos in the ones that it generated. Um, but it's also like, of course, you know, sort of AI's interpretation of the fact. Nothing to worry about. This is not our final product, but it is an important step in, in, in the direction of getting unlimited lens of photos for free, right? So we're gonna go ahead and scroll down. This is probably the most important step right here to getting those lens of photos like unlimited. You wanna make sure that you run this conversion. I'm not, I've already done it, so I'm not gonna do it. Um, but essentially this is what creates the file. This one right here, the model.ckpt that you're going to run on your own computer however many times you want, okay? Go ahead and click that one and I'll show you where to get it later on. First, I'm gonna show you, you know, kind of sort of how to format your prompts, how to create these images, and then a little bit later on, I will show you how to get them on your own computer to generate unlimited for free. Um, we're gonna go ahead and press this play button. Once that's finished, you scroll down, press this play button. You don't need to change anything on either one of those. And we scroll down, and here's where we get, it get things get a little bit interesting, right? So right here, you're gonna see sort of the same kind of wonky uh, generated images because I put in a prompt that's photo of Lil, which is the same thing that this is actually generated off of, right? Once you've trained it on your face, you can go and you can steal these ones. I'll go ahead and give you a link to this document right here um, that has a whole bunch of prompts that you can, you know, sort of create your own photos, but you just go ahead and paste that in there. Make sure to replace your name with that one right there. It's sort of a little formula here. These all do different things, but for the first iteration, you don't need to change anything. Um, numbers, this is just like the number of photos it's gonna generate. This is the guidance, so like how, how closely do you want it to resemble this prompt? The number of steps, 25 is usually fine, but if, you're, if your photos end up super weird um, or like digitally effect, you can make it, you can put it up to 50. This is the resolution of the photos. 512 by 512 is like where it gets the best performance. So we're just gonna go ahead and paste that one in there. I'm gonna be a suburb punk, punk in just a second and press play. Play. And look at that, what a beefcake. I almost dropped a bad word, that's all right. Okay, so um, I'm gonna go ahead and save a couple of these because they're super badass, um, I think. And you can kind of like change this, you know, this prompt however you want. If I'm close up portrait of Lil as a cyberpunk, I can say just, you know, not close up, regular portrait of Lil as a cyberpunk. Um, I can say chiseled feature, chiseled manly features. I can say like I want it to be red primarily or something like that. Go ahead and hit play. We'll see it again. And don't go away yet because I'm about to show you how to get this on your own computer. There is another step here it's coming soon, I promise. And look at that. That's pretty badass. I like that one. We're going to save that. That's cool. I like the kind of red undertones here. Now to go through a second one, we'll make myself like a Viking here. 
Oh man. Look at me as a mother effing Viking. I look fat. Okay, that's fine. That's cool. Whatever. AI is gonna AI, right? Now there's me as a cyborg. That's kind of cool looking, you know? So if I wanted to do like a photograph, you know, I could do something like this. Now it obviously doesn't look exactly like me, um, but it's, it's something and sometimes it gets weird with the eyes and stuff like that. But of course you can generate unlimited of these. Okay, so one really important thing to keep in mind is that within this context you can use this unlimited times you can whatever you can come up with you can make on here using text using your name whatever but as soon as you leave this this app right here it's going to disconnect and you're going to have to retrain the ai in order to do that so if you want to save this to your computer to run unlimited times now if you're on a windows pc you can use an app like this one right here i'll leave a link in the description below it's called stable diffusion web ui um, and you can load that up. I do not have a PC, so I can't show you how to do that, but it should be quite similar to the one that's on Mac, which is Diffusion B. If you have a Mac, go to this also, link in the description, of course. Go here, download it for Mac, install it. Once you first install it on Mac, you're gonna see something that looks a little bit like this. It's still just gonna be using the standard AI, not the one that you've trained on your face. So that's where you have to go into Google Drive. You're in your drive. Um, you're gonna go in here, you're gonna find the folder called Stable Diffusion Weights. That's where this should be. Right here, Lil, it's whatever you put your name as. L-I-L-E is what I put my name as. And then 1200. And then under here, you should find a, a find a file called model.ckpt. You're gonna download it. Now that, that model.ckpt is a huge file. It's like four gigabytes. So it is gonna take you a little bit of time to download. But once you download it to your computer, you can use it unlimited time I'm going to say it one more time, to generate unlimited Lensa AI images. Then you're going to load it up into Stable Diffusion or Web UI if you're on a PC. To do that, you have to go over here. You are going to go to Settings. You have to put in Add New Model. If you're like me and you have a whole bunch of different models, you, I would suggest you rename this so you know what it is. You can call it, you know, like L-I-L-E, something like that. And uh, that way you can always find it within the app. We're gonna go open, it's gonna import the model. Now once you have the AI model added into Diffusion B, you are going to go over here, which is just the text to image here. You're gonna type in your prompt or copy and paste it from my document. Um, and of course, make sure to change your name to the correct one. We're gonna to go to options. Uh, I like to generate like 20 images at a time. These can take a long time. It completely depends on how powerful your computer is. Mine is pretty powerful and it still takes some time to actually do this. Uh, set the steps to 25. I like having these like more vertical images, so I'll put 768 by 512. Custom model. This is where you have to set your custom model. Make sure that it's the one that you just added right there. And if you want to, you can use a negative prompt. You don't have to. Um, and we're, uh, we weren't using them earlier, so don't worry too much about that. I'm gonna go ahead and hit generate, and then of course I'll just scroll you through kind of some of my history here. This is the God of Nature prompt. This is a Poseidon prompt. This is like the God of Air. We've got me in Mexico, me monster, uh, monster, cyberpunk, uh, different cyberpunk. Um, this is me as like a Pixar character. I couldn't quite get this one right, but that's kind of how it goes. This is me, the God of Water. Um, I'm not sure what that is. We've got gladiators uh, and we've got Vikings. We've got ninjas and samurai, uh, zombie, and um, this is what is a Chinese propagandist. This is a Thai propagandist. It's interesting to see the difference between Thai and Chinese. We've got a Soviet propagandist, astronaut. Till next time.